Okay, so I want to talk about how the system actually works. So what we've got is we've got, a, of course, a radio on the transmit side, and we just put on a little miniature antenna so it's not quite as powerful, okay? On the receive side, we've got an antenna, and then we've got an attenuator, and we've got the radio. And we want to make sure, of course, the radios are set to the same channel. And we also want to make sure that this receive side radio is turned all the way up in terms of its volume so we can hear it broadcast when we're communicating with it, all right? So the way that it works is we're going to start with all of the attenuator buttons pressed. All right, now sometimes they're a little sticky when you first get them, so you have to press them a little bit hard to get them to go in. But if you press them, they should all stay in, okay? Now, that's the way we start off is with all of the buttons pressed. It adds up to 91 dB, but we'll just call it 90 dB to make it a little easier to talk about. So we're gonna start with all of them pressed, and then if we wanna test the shielding of something, let's say we think something has 40 dB of shielding, that's the amount we remove from the attenuator. So I removed a 20 and a 20, which is 40. Then I button up the box after everything's turned on, I button it up, I put it inside of the enclosure, I turn on the transmit radio, and I see if I can turn on, get the receive radio to turn on. I do the test at 24 inches distance, okay? It's important to be at two feet distance, give or take an inch or two. If the radio turns on inside, it means that you don't have 40 dB of shielding, all right? That your Faraday cage didn't have 40. If it doesn't turn on, it means you have at least 40. You could have 40, you could have 41, you could have 50 or 60, but it means you have at least 40. If you wanna know if you have more than 40, you can take it back out, open it back up, and maybe instead of removing 40, now maybe you wanna remove 60. Then you'd button it back up, you'd put it in there, and you would see if the radio would turn it on. If it turns it on, it means you don't have 60. If it does not turn it on, it means you have 60 or more. Okay, so it kinda of lets you narrow in on what the shielding is of your particular Faraday cage. Now, it's really important not to get hung up on trying to get it down to one dB when you're determining shielding effectiveness. Many things vary just a little bit here and there, how you seal the enclosure, the orientation of the antennas, you could be off by an inch or two in your distance. So try and get it down to within maybe a handful of dB, maybe five dB. If you know that you have about 50 dB or about 55 dB of shielding, that tells you that your Faraday cage is a very good Faraday cage and you know that the items inside are protected. On the other hand, if, if when you took off 20 dB, you couldn't pass the test and you're still transmitting into the Faraday cage, it means that your Faraday cage is not very good and you need to address that either by sealing up the seams or doing something a little bit different. All right, again, this gives you a quantitative way of narrowing in on what the shielding is of your Faraday cage. Now, when you get done testing, don't forget to turn off the radio so they don't run down. So I'll do an experiment where I show how you use this tester to measure the, the shielding effectiveness of a really high-performing EMP bag.